So it's been great seeing all the examples that have come through and the ways that you've developed your understanding of multiplication. I've seen some different pictures of how you've used equipment or drawings to show that, which is really great. Um, often when people think about multiplication, they think about remembering times tables facts. And that can be useful, but hopefully what we're doing is building understanding and we're giving you lots of tools so you can answer questions in all kinds of different ways and it will help you to make all those connections. Uh, we'll start off by looking at some of the examples that have been sent through. Let me start with this picture. I just love this picture. I love the look of concentration, but also I, I really like the way of using the, uh, using the arrays. And can you see here the links between the questions being made here? And again, these different sections and looking at doubles and halves. And I thought it was a great way of showing someone working really hard and making those fantastic links. So well done, well done. I really loved seeing that one. Um, and to welcome us in today, um, we have a, uh, a little sequence of questions that was written by Beth. So thank you, Beth, for these. Um, so the first fact you have, and these are I know so questions. So what you've got to do is think, well, what's the same and what's different? And it uses some of the techniques we've looked at already. Um, so the first um, multiplication sentence that we have is 4 multiplied by 12 equals 48. Already know that. Um, now pause the video and have a think. Which which number fact will come next? How it, How is it linked to the one before? What will the answer be if you know that? So look, what's the same? What's different? You might even be able to work out the, the answer and, and see how they're connected. Okay, well, let's have a look. Well, four twelves are 48. And then we had a look at this doubling and halving strategy. Double the four, it's eight. And halve the 12, it's six. So actually eight sixes will be 48 as well. Now, four, six, eight sixes becomes four sixes. It's the same number of sixes. Is this, we're still using sixes, sorry, but we've got half the number of sixes. So it'll be half, it'll be 24. Now, what about four sixes to four 11s? That's an interesting one. So um, it's still lots of four, but now we have five more lots of four. So I think that should be another 20 from 24 to 44. Um, so four lots of 11 is 44. Five lots of 11, 55. And now what about five lots of 12? So it's still fives, but then I'll have another one, five. So five twelves, 60. Well, love that sequence. I hope you managed to see some of those connections. Now, the theme today for multiplication is different ways. We're going to have a look at some, some multiplication questions and you're going to see all the different ways that you can work out the answers to them. Uh, and this will be really good. We're, we're, going to, we're going to start with looking at multiplication questions where, where they're single digit numbers. You might even know the answers to them already, but see if you can see all the creative ways that they can be broken down. And then we'll see how we can use the same technique to work out the answer to two digit numbers times single digit numbers by breaking the numbers down in different ways. Now again, we all explore the same idea, which is about breaking down multiplication calculations. Some people then will be able to take that further or in different ways, try it with different larger numbers, um, but everyone, we're gonna build all of your understanding and you'll be able to apply that and strengthen that in different ways. So at the uh, earlier in the week, we, we introduced an array. Um, so these dots, and we said there's five dots, and how many lots of five dots? There's three lots of five dots. Or you might look the other way and, and think three and how many threes. There are five lots of three. Now today we're actually going to move to what I'd call an area model. So this is almost the same thing. It's like this space here. And in this grid, rather than how many circles, it's how many squares. And we've got a row with five. And how many, how many rows are that? We, well, we've got three. And then we've got these, um, these columns of three. And how many columns of three do we have? Well, we've got five. So again, in total, of course, there's 15 squares. Now, I find an area model is useful when we're dealing with larger numbers, when there's lots of, r rather than having too many circles. Um, so let's have a look at this one. Nine multiplied by six is 54. So that is nine squares this way. And how many lots of nine? Of course, six lots of nine. And in total, there are 54 squares that are there. Um, now, there's a few ways that I could work that out if I didn't know 9 times 6. Now, you might have already knew uh, the answer to 9 times 6, but I could split 9 times 6 up just by splitting up the 9 into a, a section of 5 and a section of 4. So I guess what I would need to do is work out here. I'd need to work out, well, 5 lots of 6. This is there is 5 lots of 6, and then 
four lots of six. Can you notice in total five and four is nine? I've kept the six the same, but I've split the nine up into a five and a four. So even if you don't know your nine times table, if you can break down one of those numbers in a calculation, you'd be able to work out the answer to nine times six. But it doesn't have to be done like that. Equally, what you could do, I guess, instead is do this. So you might think, well, I'm not going to break up the 9, I'm going to keep the 9 together. I'm actually going to split the 6 up. So instead, I've got 9 times 3 and 9 times 3. So the 9 stays the same, but I've broken this 6 up into 3 and 3. And then I just need to add up the 2 lots of 27. So there's another way. Maybe instead, I mean, another thing you could do is you could split the 9 up, but split it up into 3 sections. Um, so I guess we would have there um, 3, 3 and 3. So can you see that's 9 in total? And I've kept the 6 is the same. So it's 3 lots of 3 times 6. It's 3 lots of 18. So again, it allows us great scope for creativity here. Okay, well let's have a look at this one. 8 times 7 is 56. Now some of you, you might think, oh, but I, I don't know my 8s or my 7s. And others might think, yeah, I already knew that. Um, and that's fine. You, you can both access this and, and, and really build your understanding if you're in either of those camps. Um, but what I want you to think now is pause the video and think, how can you break down either number to work out 8 times 7 in a different way? So are you going to split up the 8 or would you split up the 7 or how could that be done? Um, so, so see what are the different ways you can think of. Okay, let's have a look. Now, there's a few different possibilities. Uh, I, I'm just going to show you some, some different possibilities. Um, so it could be, I think this is my favourite one, is split the 8 up into two 4s. So do two lots of 4 times 7. Um, so 4 and 4 is 8. Um, so it'd just be 28. Add 28, 56. Equally, I, I think I could split the 7 up into a 5 and a 2. I, I'm quite comfortable with those multiplication facts. So 8 times 5 is 40. 8 times 2 is 16. So in total, 8 times 7, well, it must be 40 plus 16, 56. I think I like that one. I think, I think that, that one might be my favourite. Now, uh, this technique, of course, we can use when we're calculating with larger values. Now, again, um, you, you might not know the, um, you know, you might not have done this before. Um, calculating with a two-digit number. Um, but I love this, and I love all the different possibilities it presents. So, so long as you can break down 14 or break down 6, you'll be able to access this task. So what I want you to do is pause the video and think, how could you split this section up if you were trying to, if you were trying to multiply? So uh, could you break up the 14? What would you break the 14 into? Is it that you would break up the 6? How could you do that? What different ways could you do? Could you split the numbers up in, in, into more than, to, in, in this shape up into more than two areas? Um, so there's so many possibilities. See if you can come up with a couple. Well, so many possible ways. And let me just have a sneaky look what it could have been. So let's say, for example, um, most normal thing to do in the way that these numbers are broken down when we multiply, because it's quite friendly to multiply, is, is break, for example, a 14 into a 10 and then a 4. Um, because multiplying by 10 is, is often more straightforward. So, so there's 60 green squares there. 4, 6 is 24. So in total, 60 plus 24. So, so that's one way it could be done. Equally, I quite like this one. Just split the 14 into a 7 and a 7. Um, so then 7 sixes are 42. So there's 42 in each section. Two lots of 7 sixes um, it is 84. Of course, that final possibility, split the 6 up to two threes. 14 times 3 is 42. Another 14 times 3 is 42. Um, you might notice the doubling and halving, 14 times 3, 7 times 6. Um, add them together, 84. So again, great scope for creativity here. And so, everyone, your task today. Um, so there's a few different versions here and they're spread over three pages today. So again, just click on the blue link underneath the video and it will bring up these tasks that you can choose between. It, it might help to print them. So the, uh, the, if you have a look at this area model here, so it says part one is split this shape into two different rectangles. Work out how many squares in each rectangle. Can you write down the multiplication fact for the rectangle if you split it into two different rectangles? And then it says part two, it's the same shape, but this time split this shape into two identical rectangles. So rectangles that are the same. How can that be done? 
Um, how many how many squares in, in each section? Can you write the multiplication fact there? And what about, could you think of a way of splitting into three identical rectangles? How can that be done? Um, and again, that's a way of trying to work out, work out its, um, the, the number of squares in total, a version of multiplication. A very similar task is this one, but there's slightly more squares here. So you, you might prefer to have a go at the green task, or you might prefer to have a go at the yellow task. And for some of you brave souls, I'm sure you're going to want to have a go at the extend. So here, there's an example at the top, and then it says, calculate 14 times 9 using an area model, do in different ways. So I wonder how many different ways you can find to do that, um, and how creative you can be with that. I wonder, will you see a way that I've never seen before? I, I would love to set that as a challenge. Um, so you could draw them on here, how it can be broken down. Again, it might be you want to have a go at your own example, so you think you're going to try this with a different calculation. Um, the answers are, some suggested answers are underneath, and, and good luck. Now, tomorrow we've got an investigation, and I am absolutely looking forward to it. So I'm sure I'm going to see you all then.